This is the iron 3 test. In this test I've already added the iron 3 and the distilled water. So now I'm just going to stir to make sure that my solid substance has dissolved. And in my third test tube, give it a stir. These procedures are the same as the iron 2, except for in this test we're using iron 3. So in this first test tube I'm going to add in the K3 and then we will observe the color of the precipitate formed. So this is iron 3 and K3. It makes a red a dark reddish, orange, kind of brown color. Notice how it's sitting on top of that yellow. Okay. In our next test tube, we'll add in the K4 and observe the color of this precipitate. This one turns a blue color. A real dark, dark blue. So the iron two also turned a dark blue color, but if you remember in the iron two, below the blue was a white, clear, colorless solution. In this one, we have a yellow solution underneath that dark blue and it also sits near the top when it's not disturbed. Then we'll add into the <coughs> KSCN to see what color this one changes. And we get a red precipitate also. So how to differentiate between iron 2 and iron 3 is that iron 2 turns blue in K3 where iron 3 turns red. Both irons turn blue in the K4 solution but the iron 2 turns a powder blue, whereas the iron 3 turns this dark blue. And then the iron 3 gives us this blood red color, whereas in the iron 2, there was no precipitate at all. In order to identify iron, it has to make these three solutions. So if you have iron three, it'll produce a red, a blue, and a red precipitate. If you have iron two, then you should go back to the iron two video to see what color precipitates are formed in which reactants.